Iowa football releasing its depth charts amid Big Ten media days. Yesterday, we looked at the offensive depth chart. Today, we're going to look at the defense. But first, a reminder to please hit that like button. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing that. Hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Great content all year long. Basketball, football, we even mix in some baseball and at times some wrestling uh, Hawkeye content all year round, and it's free right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Also, check out GoAscentNutrition.com. That's GoAscentNutrition.com. They've got some great products. You can find the benefits of Ascent Nutrition's Wild Harvested Pine Pollen Powder. This contains nature's highest source of brassinosteroids. It supports a healthy libido and hormone balance. It also provides over 200 nutrients that are beneficial for your overall health. Your order supports this channel from the Hawkeye of the Storm and former Iowa graduate Lance Shuttler. Visit GoAscentNutrition.com. That's GoAscentNutrition.com. Use the code Hawkeyes at checkout for 10% off your total order. So Iowa releasing a depth chart. It's a preseason depth chart. I did mention in my video yesterday that I think you have to take this with a grain of salt. I don't know that it means a whole lot, but hey, we enjoy looking at it here from the Hawkeye of the Storm and uh, seeing what we can gather. So let's take a look at the defense now that we've uh, went through the offense and place kicking position. Let's take a look at the defense. You see John Wagoner here at the top. He's listed as your starting left end. Ethan Herkett, who got hurt early last year, had a good motor. When he played last year, he showed a good motor, got hurt. He'll be back as a sophomore from Cedar Rapids and a chance to make an impact. John Wagoner and Ethan Herkett bolstering that left end. And then, of course, the right end, you slide a few spots down. Joe Evans, the undersized former quarterback from Ames, uh, as a senior now, will he become more of an every down guy. They may not need him to be because you got Deontay Craig who uh, really showed out last year. And don't forget about Aaron Graves, Aaron Graves, a freshman on this uh, roster. That's not listed on the two deeps. No surprise there, but I think he'll factor in left tackle. You've got Noah Shannon, Lucas Van Ness, who I think will be run inside and out Logan Lee and YA black. You've got eight guys you're confident in plus Aaron Graves, plus maybe a Brian Allen jr. Who's another freshman who enrolled early. They are potentially eight to 10 deep. Uh, They're definitely eight deep. Uh, if you can stay healthy, you, you might be nine or ten deep um, at uh, defensive line. So uh, what a what a group they've got and potential to be really good. Uh, but again, we got to wait and see. Uh, but a good group there. Looking at the linebacker position, you've got your Leo linebacker Justin Jacobs, your middle Jack Campbell, and your weak side linebacker Seth Benson. Kyler Fisher backing him up. You see Jay Higgins also listed there. And how about Cooper DeGene listed as your starting cash? Uh, not a huge surprise, but I'm happy to see it. Cooper DeGene's athleticism, his motor, you know, he's played some cornerback since he's gotten here. Uh, he was projected more as a safety when he was recruited him at cash. That, that's a very, very intriguing, uh, slot for Cooper DeGene. I'll be interested to see how he performs there. You see left corner Jamari Harris, who will be missing game one against the Jackrabbits due to an OWI during the off season. He's backed up by Terry Roberts. That will continue to be a battle. Riley Moss is safe at the other spot uh, on the right side, backed up by Brandon Diaz Fernandez. But you're going to see guys like TJ Hall potentially factor in. Um, Could we see a guy like Deshaun Lee end up getting some playing time? We've seen freshmen play, and that's a position Iowa typically deals with injuries at. So it'll be interesting to see how deep they go, and maybe we'll see a true freshman or two uh, play in the secondary. And where will Xavier Wampa mix in? You see safety. Strong safety, Kayvon Merriweather, backed up by Cooper DeGene. So what happens if Kayvon goes down? Does Cooper DeGene come up to safety? They put Castro in at cash. I mean, that's intriguing, right? Um, that they have Cooper DeGene listed as your backup strong safety. Quinn Schulte listed as your uh, free safety. Reggie Bracey backing him up. So Xavier Wampa nowhere on the list. And not a total shock being a true freshman, but I expect him and Graves to play. I also expect TJ Hall to play. Will he play on defense or will it be exclusive to special teams? We don't know. I mentioned Brian Allen earlier. He enrolled early. Uh, Yesterday, we talked about Drew Stevens. He's a true freshman who enrolled early. All those guys have a chance to play. Good chance to play, I think, early. Torrey Taylor's your punter. Luke Elkins, your long snapper. So that's your your list. That's your depth chart for the preseason. Overall takeaways, uh, first of all, I mentioned this earlier, but I think the defensive line can be really strong. Um, I think there was a lot of hype following spring practice, especially the open practice that the media got to look at and the fans got to look at. I think you look at that practice, though, the defensive line was dominant against Iowa's offensive line, and we have very little confidence in Iowa's offensive line to this point. Struggled most of last year. I know they performed better in the Outback Bowl against Kentucky, but how much does that mean when you have a fairly depleted Kentucky defense? Um, 
it will be intriguing to see how much of a jump both of those units uh, make because I do believe the defensive line is 8 to 10 deep. Wagner, Herkett, Shannon, Van Ness, Lee, Black, Evans, Craig, Graves, Brian Allen potentially. That's 10 guys, eight of which have played and have played well at times. Uh, John Wagner, his his time is running out. He, he's got to do something now. He's a senior from Dowling. He's 6'5", 267. He's got the physical makings of a really good defensive end, and you hope he can come into his own and really uh, emerge as a dominant edge rusher because – I know if he doesn't, I, I don't think Joe Evans is going to be. Joe, you don't want Joe Evans to be your number one defensive end. No offense to Joe Evans, you just don't want that. And yeah, you can just rely on depth. But Iowa did that last year, and at times were successful. They ran a lot of stunt action early, got to the quarterback at times. I, I thought Phil Parker did a really good job with the personnel he had. But Iowa needs somebody to emerge as an edge rusher. Could it be Lucas Van Ness? Will he end up playing more on the outside? Certainly, he's got the athleticism at six foot five, two sixty nine, built very similar to a John Wagner. But both of those guys, could they both be dominant edge rushers? If they could develop into that, if they have developed into that, this could be an exceptional defensive line. And then you mix in guys like Aaron Graves, who you may send in on third down. Um, and, and just across the board, like I mentioned, Logan Lee, YA Black, Deontay Craig had some moments last year, dealt with injuries as well. If those guys can stay healthy, which is always a big if. Uh, it can be a really good line. Linebacker's fine. We know that. You know, Will Higgins or Kyler Fisher, who has seen time on special teams, will uh, either of those guys be called to action? You never know. With injuries, uh, that very well could be the case. And both of those guys have, have some experience now as juniors. Um, so you hope those guys would be ready if called upon. But the top three, that unit between Jacobs, Campbell, and Benson is as strong as you're going to see anywhere in the conference, anywhere in the Big Ten. I'm concerned to some extent about cornerback depth you know, you hope that Jamari Harris, I'm assuming, you know, he's listed as number one of the depth chart ahead of Terry Roberts, which surprised me a bit. You have a guy who's suspended in Jamari Harris, and if you're talking a neck-and-neck neck battle, wouldn't you probably give the edge to Terry Roberts, given the fact that he hasn't gotten arrested for OWI this year? Um, I'm just speculating, but I'm not there every day uh, watching how these guys are working. So that's probably a good sign that Jamari Harris has learned from the mistake and, and will be ready week two. But I expect... Roberts and Moss to uh, anchor the defensive backfield week one. I also expect South Dakota State to test those two guys. Um, and if one of those guys struggles, who do you turn to? Um, and, and you may say, well, why are we worried about South Dakota State? We saw Riley Moss struggle at times against Kent State. Against Colorado State, we saw some struggles as well for Iowa's defense. So, got to remember, South Dakota State has one of the best coaches in John Stiglmeyer that Iowa is going to face all year. From a talent perspective, no, they don't have the recruits, but I would not be surprised to see them score some points, and Iowa will be down Jamari Harris week one. So we'll see. Brandon Diaz-Fernandez is going to have a chance. TJ Hall is going to have a chance. Could it be mentioned to Sean Lee earlier? Those will be interesting storylines to follow. One posi A couple of positions that aren't listed on either of the depth charts that we talked about today or yesterday. Who's going to be holding? Is it going to be Phelps at punter? Um, there were rumors in the spring or discussions, I guess LeVar Woods went out and said this, that Cooper DeGene had, had worked as a holder. Um, I've heard since then that that's not really happening anymore, but there are some other guys who are mixing in as holders, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be Phelps. And then the other question is who ends up returning kicks, returning punts. Those two uh, specialty uh, positions are not listed here. Could those, could, you know, could Arlen Bruce be involved? Could Keegan Johnson be involved? The problem with running wide receivers is, at those two specialty spots is you're already razor thin at wide receiver. So could it be somebody from D I could see a scenario potentially where Iowa runs a young defensive back um, as your punt returner. I, I don't love the idea of being of it being Riley Moss. They're not real deep at corner, but could it be a guy like TJ Hall? Maybe, you know, if TJ Hall enrolled early, heard great things about him. Maybe he ends up being that guy. Those two skills are very specific. They're difficult skills to teach. Uh, sometimes it just comes natural to guys. Certainly it came natural to Charlie Jones, Amir Smith Marset on kick returns. We saw it out of Desmond King. Iowa tends to do pretty good figuring out who's returning punts and kicks, but they have had bad years, right? The Kyle Gronoweg year returning punts was not great. Max Cooper struggled when he was called upon. Josh Jackson struggled when he was called upon. So we'll see. Those are going to be the positions that you watch as well, but not a ton of surprise from the defensive depth chart. Uh, minus maybe the Cooper to Gene listed as the backup strong safety and not Xavier Wampa. But again, Wampa's a, a true freshman. I I'm guessing there's going to be some changes once we get through fall camp and injuries happen in fall camp. We know that uh, I was down a couple of offensive players uh, in both Justin Britt 
uh, and Jackson Ritter at wide receiver. No known season-ending injuries yet for the defense, so we will have to just wait and see. But fall camp, just around the corner, folks. More coverage right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Stay tuned.